How's it going guys and welcome back. So after many many hours we finally have the platinum trophy for this game which means it's time for things I wish I knew earlier in Days Gone. Before we get started I will say we already have uploaded onto the channel a tips and tricks video for early game. This is a little bit different than a tips and tricks video in the sense that they're genuinely things I discovered later than I'd like to have done and will definitely go back and tell my earlier self when I started playing this game. So with that said let's jump into it. The first thing on this list is mainly directed at trophy hunters and completionists which is going to be to make sure you loot all of the human bodies during the story missions and the ambush camps and stuff like that, as once you finish the story it becomes pretty rare to find human enemies unless you get ambushed along the road and in maybe a few specific areas. The reason it's so important to loot as many human bodies as we can while they're still abundant in the game is because one of the trophies called You've Got Red On You asks us to loot a total of 541 items from enemy corpses. And as we know the Freakers don't really drop items, they just drop bounties which don't count towards this trophy so they are required to be human enemies. On another side note we actually have to loot the item itself. This means if we try to loot an enemy body after killing him and it says that the inventory is full so we didn't manage to loot it, this doesn't count towards the trophy. We actually need to be able to pick up the item and efficiently loot it for it to count towards the trophy. By the way for anyone wondering there is actually free roam after you finish the story meaning you have complete freedom to go back to any area of the game including those that get locked off for certain parts of the story. This means pretty much nothing is missable in this game. You can go back to everywhere. You can go back and do all of the side quests, even all of the camp missions that you may have previously put off for later on. The only thing that comes to mind that's actually missable is the colonel's speeches. He gives six speeches during his camp that count as collectibles, which are technically missable though are not necessary towards the platinum trophy as you only need 75% of the total collectibles in the game, so it doesn't really make anything missable that's actually important. The reasoning I mention on this is so you can freely get on with the story if that's what you wish to do without being paranoid of missing out on side quests or not being able to come back afterwards or anything like that. Now that we started on the topic of trophy hunting, there are actually two other trophies I would definitely recommend trying to start working on as soon as you possibly can. The first one is going to be the Art of Bike Repair. This one's actually very quick to get and won't take too long because your bike is going to take a lot of damage throughout the game. And all this trophy requires you to do is spend a hundred scrap repairing your bike. So quite honestly, you don't even have to put any extra effort into this trophy as you'll automatically get it by just repairing your bike. But the reason I mention this is because a lot of people get in the habit of always repairing their bike back at the mechanics when they refuel and stuff like that, which is great for after you've already got this trophy. But before you get this trophy, I would always recommend repairing your bike manually by using scraps just over time to get this trophy. And then once you already have the trophy, then you can go back to just spending the credits to repair your bike at the mechanic instead. The third trophy I would recommend working on as soon as possible is the Old Reliable. This one requires us to kill 200 enemies with a weapon we have crafted ourselves. So these are mainly going to be referring to our melee weapons that we can craft out of bats, um, pieces of fences, anything like that. As we progress through the story, we'll unlock recipes so that we can craft stuff like spiked bats. So definitely every time you pick up a bat from the floor, check out if you've got enough materials to craft it into something else. And this way the trophy won't be so tedious as if you leave it to the end of the game and have to consecutively focus on getting 200 kills with it specifically, it's definitely going to get kind of annoying having to repair it all the time or look around for another bat. On the other hand, if you have this in the back of your mind and automatically do it every time you see one or when you play through the story, it will become a lot less tedious. By the way, if you open up the craft wheel with the L1 button and go up to the melee and notice you've got no options there to craft, the reason is because you need to actually have some sort of a melee weapon picked up, like a basic piece of wood or like the bat or the leg store. Quite honestly, this is something that most of you have probably already realized automatically and it's pretty logical that if you want a spiked bat you have to at least pick a bat up from the ground but I was under the impression I could craft it out of thin air and wondered for quite some time why sometimes I could not actually craft any melee weapons and I guess this would be a perfect time to move into my least favorite part of these videos which is in the embarrassing things I didn't realize until way too late in the game and quite honestly there's only probably one other than the crafting thing I just mentioned is you can swipe in any of the directions to directly access any of the menus this means I spent a lot of I was actually clicking on the touchpad to open up the menu and then from there swiping either left, right, up or down to go to whichever specific menu I wanted to go to. And then by a pure accident I accidentally swiped to the side while I was playing and realized this could directly take me to the map menu or directly go to the skills menu instead of going into the menu and then going into each sub menu separately. Again this is something I'm guessing most of you realize, the game may even explain this directly, I'm not too sure. But yeah just in case there's a couple of you out there who didn't realize this as I did. Okay so let's move on to something actually a bit more helpful for everybody. So it's obvious 
in pretty much every video game that headshots deal more damage to enemies. However, something I didn't realize until pretty late into the game is that headshots actually give you more experience points. Dealing the final blow to an enemy with a headshot is going to give you a decent amount more XP. For example, on a basic enemy, if we kill him, shoot him in the foot, for example, it will give us about 50 XP. However, if we do a headshot, it will do 75 XP. And if you add that up over time after killing hundreds and hundreds of enemies, that's a pretty good difference in percentage. Also remember to stop by every now and then at your first lookout tower, the first base you go to with Boozer, as refueling for free isn't the only useful thing we can do here. There's also going to be, just below the watchtower, quite a few materials we can pick up, and they're going to respawn periodically, so it's definitely worth coming back every now and then just to loot those, because here we're guaranteed to get all of the materials we need to be able to craft more Molotovs. And why do we want Molotovs? Molotovs, for anyone who's at endgame and maybe still has a few of the infestation missions going on, this is why you want Molotovs. It's kind of a pain late game to actually find all of the materials each time to craft the Molotovs to do the infestation mission, then you need to go looking for more materials. So by stacking up on them every time you come past your base, it's a good habit to get into just to make sure you're always stacked up on enough materials so when you come across a new infestation nest, you have enough Molotovs to deal with it. Something that gets introduced to us very early on in the game is the fact that some cars have alarms on that if we try to loot them or push them, the car alarm will go off. But what I'm not sure if it mentioned in the tutorial in the game is that we can actually tell which cars these are before we interact with them. The cars that have the alarm active are going to have the red light indicator as they would in real life pretty much. So this way we can see which cars have alarms before we interact with them. This isn't only useful to disable them to make sure we don't attract enemies if we are going to loot that vehicle, but we can also use this in our advantage. For example, if we throw a rock at a car that has an alarm, it'll set the alarm off, attracting all the enemies towards it. We can kind of use this as a bit of an improvised detractor to gather all the enemies together, and then if we want to throw a grenade at them and stuff like that. And one other thing that I wouldn't really generally put in this video, as it's something I did realize pretty early on, and I'm sure most of you probably have as well, but I'm not going to make any more tips and tricks videos on this game, as there's nothing else to really share, is the fact that Remember, if you go past an ambulance and you can loot it, it's most likely going to have a medkit in the back. If you go past any sort of police vehicle, it's going to have extra ammunition in the back. And if you're in the need of fuel, these pickup truck things have usually got a fuel can resting in the back. This isn't always the case, but it's definitely a good place to check if you are in desperate need of extra fuel. So as usual guys, definitely do leave in the comments down below any extra tips you may have for the rest of the community out there. And I hope you did find this video helpful. If you did, don't forget that thumbs up button, subscribe for more content coming very soon, and we'll see you next time.